Hi everybody, uh, my name is Botswana, let's get started. Uh, I want to explain to you how to find the percent yield of a copper or it could be any metal, it could be copper, it could be aluminium, it could be copper chloride or any metal, any metal or any salt. Now, let's get started to the business without further ado, so uh, let's get into it. Okay, now let's see here for example, let's get straight. So you had a um, aluminium, it was react with the copper sulfate and they produce aluminium sulfate. For the most case, they're gonna give you can make a question if they don't, and then you can always balance. Okay, so I'm not gonna go for the whole how to balance the equation, but if you want to, please leave a comments below. Tell me I need equations or video about how to balance chemical equation. I don't know how to. Now let's assume now you know how to balance, and this is your question that you have. Means you want to produce how many copper? Three copper from aluminium and copper sulfate this copper sulfate this copper okay so if you look quickly this aluminium seems to be more reactive so it went and they replaced this copper and then means you left you the aluminium and sulfate and this copper now is separately means you have produced so here in the question they say here the percentage yield of copper produced oh so this is the copper produced and the mass of the copper produced is 4.6 5 what gram okay but they say this math is of aluminium also 1.87 is gram of aluminium react now we want to find the percentage yield. percentage yield, there's a formula how to find there's a percentage yield equal let's see if I the percentage yield okay equal to the actual yield actual yield over actual yield over theoretical yield theoretical yield and then you multiply by 100 percent is like actually easy. okay so what yield do you want to find you want to find the yield of a copper because this is what produced copper so that's the actual yield means the one which is produced so we have the actual yield here which is this one here so I can say the actual yield we do have so I can say yeah this is the actual yield oh so this one here I do have already so now i have to find the theoretical yield and that's where the saga began for the most students like oh my god how did i get this easy i'll show you how to get that easy way okay so what you do take the mass of whatever react what are reacted they say the gram of aluminium react means this gram react take its mass right here which is 1.87 so I say 1.87. That's how they say it's, I'm not creating. They say aluminium react. So take what react by its mass, right? Which is in ground. And then you multiply by one mole of what reacted. One mole. So say one mole. It's not even magic, just say one mole of whatever react. So say one mole. But what reacted? Aluminium. So this you see aluminium. So one mole of aluminium. Over. Over what? over molar mass of what reacted okay so uh, how do you get molar mass come to your periodic table your molar mass for the most case you can get in your periodic table so this is aluminium okay aluminium and if you look carefully depend on the periodic table they're gonna give to you an exam so aluminium it has a 13 and also it has a 27 the bigger number that's your molar mass so I don't want to go through the whole periodic table, but I've got another separate video explain the whole periodic table. But for now, we just need one molar mass and this one number of electron mass number or atomic number. But let's stick to the molar mass. I don't want to deviate from the concept. So we're gonna take uh, one mole, say one mole of aluminium, divide. There's a, oh, there's a two moles here. I know there's a two moles, but don't confuse yourself. Say one mole of aluminium. Okay, this is a method, and then divided by the molar mass of aluminium, and we have seen molar mass of aluminium is 27. But the molar mass always the unit of molar mass is gram per mole, is a gram per mole, and the unit of mole is just a mole, that's a mole here. You understand that? And now, what we do then, and then we multiply, and then come here now. Look, what is that produce is copper. So now we were here on a what reacted, mm -hmm. now we go to the what produce. But what produce is copper. So how many moles? Three. So we want to say three moles of copper over and then divide by now because this will produce, right? Yeah, that's produced. Divide by 
how many months were reacted for this case. That's what I say, don't stress yourself. Follow how I show you. So we take how many moles of copper produced, but how this copper produced? Oh, we had two moles of aluminum divided by two moles of aluminum. Oh, we almost there. Now the next thing what we do, we say multiply. We almost there. Multiply. Take all the copper itself. Like, like this is like how we did here on the beginning here. Uh, okay, copper itself it has what is the molar mass of copper? So here I'm gonna say what? I'm gonna say uh, molar mass of copper. What is the molar mass of copper? Is sixty three point five. So you say sixty three point five. How do you know that? I'll show you now. And then over one more, one more. Those are only three. No, just take as one more. Like I said, just follow me. You'll be fine. So sixty-three point five over one mole of copper. And this is gonna give us what theoretical yield. Oh, you didn't tell me how did you know sixty-three? This is three is a molar mass of copper. Which, like I say, if you wanna get the molar mass, molar mass of any of the element, come to your periodic table. See, it's a copper. There's a two number. One is at the bottom and one at the top. If you look at if you have a 26 and 63.5. So the bigger one is the molar mass. Okay. And that's how it is. Oh, yes, that's how it is. That's how I got that 63. That's how I got this 63.5. That's how you know the molar mass. So now multiply all this going to give you the theoretical yield. So this multiplication all this is theoretical yield. So if you plug all of this in the calculator, this is going to give you uh, 6. 6, 6.6 .6 gram gram so this is what the theoretical yield the gram of what of copper so what we're gonna do means we have the actual yield which was the this which will produce and then divide by theoretical yield which we just got it so this is theoretical yield theoretical yield Mm, bad handwriting. If my grade one teacher was going to see this, I was going to get baby. You know, we used to get carpal punishment back in the days, and I love it because it helps a lot. So, this is what is the theoretical yield of copper. Remember, this is the gram of copper, and this can be so. Here, you can simply say this we're looking for the copper, my gram of copper. Question mark, gram of copper. Say this we just got now, it was gram of copper. And this is theoretical yield, this is gram, gram of copper. For now, okay, uh, theoretical yield, theoretical yield. So what we're going to do now, simply substitute and then get it done. So we're going to say that percentage yield equal to, what is actual yield? We got it. Uh, they were given to us for 0.65 over what we got now, which is theoretical yield from the formula here, and you multiply by 100%. Multiply by the calculator, this is going to give 70.5%. We're done. Now, let's go to the next question. I want to do like three questions so you can understand. Uh, so, if the solution was not clear, you want to check for yourself, I'll put it out for you this one, okay? So, you can just have a little clear so that you get a pitch of how the answer came about, okay? So, because we have a different thinking process, so with your thinking process, you can have a look at it like, oh, I see. No, it's not supposed to be like that. You know, I like people are critical thinking. See, you can say, nah, that's not supposed to be like that. I think it should be like this. Like this. Leave the comments below. Tell me. Did you feel like you learned? Now, we go to the next question, right? We're not done yet. So now, um, we got another question here, okay? Uh, There's another question here. They say, uh, um, reactions. So we have a... But before we go further, right? Look, family. Before we go further, you know? Uh, let me show you something very, very cool. Please. Come right here. Show me support. See, show me support, you know, help my other channel where we do something for the community, feeding the homeless, helping people who are vulnerable, you know, so they can stand on their own two feet. And this right here, that's me when I was fourth grade. It's me, it's my mom, and my mom's friend. I don't know it's my mom's friend. I'm going to have to ask my mom. Okay, see? And these people that are working in the community, because I was raised that, you know, you have to lift up other people because if those are the people that become successful, and then also you can become successful. See what I'm saying? So help other people. You know, share with the people, you know, don't know how to give back. So go to Tranan Corsi, see how we feed the homeless, 
See how we have the vulnerable people. See how we doctrine people and have them tell like, look, man, I was just like you yesterday. And that's true, you know. But after, you know, decided to remove my mind off my face, you can see me here. There's no magic. You can see that me right there. You can see the life where I come from, man. I come from nothing, but I'm made out of it. I'm trying to do something right. Okay, now let's go to the next question. So next question here. So go check that one right there. Show me support. You can donate to if it's convenient. You know, I appreciate it too. But it's not like you must do that. Come right here. But if you do, we definitely gonna appreciate. Okay, this one right here. Come subscribe to the channel right now. Now let's go to the next question number two. So question number two. Um, okay, I'm trying to go quick now. Okay. So now this is there's a reaction. So this reaction, uh, okay. So you see they give you a question here. What is that question? Our equation say copper sulfate to react to the zinc. Zinc, and then we got uh, copper plus zinc sulfate. Okay, it's copper sulfate here. Okay, but uh, you know, you're gonna have to balance this question so we see, oh, everything's been balanced. Very good, balanced. Because how many copper? You got one copper, you got one copper. One zinc, one zinc, one sulfate, one sulfate. So everything balanced. Now, excuse me, so, so we wanna find the percentage yield. Percentage yield of what? So, let me, let me drink your water a little. Percentage yield. Like I said, you come yourself down and see how we can dissect this question. Okay, so reaction of this aqueous copper sulfate. Oh, so we had a copper sulfate. And then with the excess zinc. Oh, so it seems like the zinc is the one which will produce. The excess zinc produce. See? Produce what? Oh, so zinc was it? No, no, no. Zinc was not produced. I must correct this. The excess zinc produced. Also, this copper sulfate and zinc, when they react, means there was excess zinc. So they react together, they produce what? Copper and zinc sulfate. So it seems like this situation, they were trying to collect the copper, as far as roughly, if I understand, or zinc sulfate. Let's go to the question to see which percentage yield do they referring to. So if you look careful here, uh, they say, uh, what do you want? Percentage yield of this reaction. Two figure, find the percentage yield of this reaction. So they did not specify. So it's up to us to find the percentage yield. But of course, we know it's going to be copper that you're going to be collecting. So now we're going to do the same trick like we did before. So percentage yield equal to, uh, equal to actual yield over theoretical yield. And they will multiply by 100%. Okay, let's go now. Actually, you do know. So, actually, is what produce. Produce this of copper metal. Oh, so the actual yield we got already is actual yield AY. Actual yield we got. Okay. So, now we want to get to a theoretical yield like how we did before because that's where the saga drama begin. <laughs> you see, that's a drama begin. Now, let's go show you now. So, let's find the theoretical yield. Of copper means of gram of copper cu what okay this we're gonna get like i said before what you do okay take the mass which were uh which were reacting like i said reacting what did they say oh this of aquas copper also oh, this is the one which reacted okay which is one point also oh, let to take that one point one point two 1.27 gram. Uh, the space is not going enough, so let me, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do here. Let's do here. Excuse me. So I'm going to say here equal. So this space can be enough. Otherwise, this space is not going enough. Okay. So I'm going to say okay. So we want to get gram of copper yield, theoretical yield, I mean, equal. Now, take the mass reactor, which is 1.274 so yes, gram. And then you multiply what we multiply with, just like I said before. Take a one mole. <laughs> Listen to this. One mole. Or don't say, oh, I see. No, no. Take it one mole for reactor. What reactor? One mole. Or what reactor? Is copper sulfate. 
this one. And then we overbuy molar mass of copper sulfate. Okay? Now, let me show you how you get the molar mass of copper sulfate. So, you find the molar mass of copper sulfate. So, let me show you. So, it's copper sulfate. So, to get molar mass, you go, okay, what is the molar mass of copper? Means you want to put them together. Copper 63.5. Oh, 63.5. I want to show you how to get molar mass so we can come and plug here at the bottom. Molar mass of copper sulfate, the copper itself is 63.5, and we add by sulfate 32. How do you know this? Go to your periodic table. Let me show you. Copper, it's copper sulfate. Right? Okay, I can show you from here. Copper sulfate. Copper is here. This is copper here. 63. This is a bigger number. 63.5. Sulfur, sulfur is here. Sulfur is 32. Plus oxygen, oxygen is here. Is 16. This is a bigger number, smaller mass. So it's going to be 16 times 4 because oxygen there are 4. 16 times 4. So then you're going to have a copper sulfate. You put together this, put in a calculator, put in a calculator, and then you're going to get something which I'm going to write here next. You see, let me show you quick, okay? So now that one is going to give us the molar mass of um, 159.609. Oh, so it's 169. If you put all this together, it's going to be 169 point or oh, point uh, 609. 609. That's a molar mass, so you can say 169.6, you know, somewhere. 169 point. Okay, so now, not 159, my 159, my 159, 159, 159. My apology. So, molar mass of copper sulfate, you know, is 169. 159 uh, 59 sorry <laughs> 159 and then we multiply so now we go we go for the one which you produce right one mole of what produce now you see we done with what where coming okay one mole what produce copper and the divide see but this copper come from what? This copper, you see, you take one mole of what produced because it was one mole anyway, and then divide by the, the where it was coming from. How many mole here? There's a one. For this case, is it one? But if it's two, you say two. So we're gonna say divide by the two mole of where that copper coming from. It come from the copper sulfate, but it's one mole because the equation was balanced like that. See what I'm saying? Like I said before, but just in case, if let's say we had a question which had let's say two copper blah, blah, react to the, so you put the moles with, with what you see here. Like a previous question, you see it was three copper divide by two aluminium because there were two different on a product number of moles were different. Like let me take it back a little bit, come back. See here, we say three moles of copper for this case, three moles of copper. So, so there were three moles of copper because they were in the products. In the products, excuse me, we had what? We had a three copper in a reactor. We had a two aluminum. We say three product divided by three what? Uh, three moles and divided by two moles of. So for this case here, it's just a one one for each. Meaning one moles of what we produce copper. Oh, sorry. So, so, so. It's one moles of what? Produce copper. So sorry, family. Sorry, sorry, brother and sister. See, one more of what produced our copper is just one, and now where copper come from, it was because this something was react, which is one, one, one more. So you saw multiply by one more of copper, and then also one more of one more of what of, of copper sulfate. Because we produce that from copper sulfate, one more. And then we multiply now. Okay. Now you multiply by the molar mass. The molar mass of your product. So what's your product? Copper. So molar mass of copper is 63.5. And the unit of mole per plant per mole. You know how to check in the periodic table molar mass. You know. Go there, check molar mass of the copper, which is the product, and then divide by one mole of copper one mole and then put the calculator that one and that's gonna give us the theoretical yield so put the calculator and that's gonna give us 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 
5, 50, 57, 2, 2. Ground. So now we, so we have what theoretical yield also we got theoretical yield. So what you do, plug it in, finish the equation. So now I can simply say now we have a theoretical yield already, and you have what we had given already, uh, the what the actual yield. See, so our actual yield was this on log. See, we the one which you produce, and then divided by theoretical that one. And I'm going to plug 100, then you finish. So I can simply raise here. Say, so, okay, let's just make a space. But when you write in a solution, make sure you write everything so you get the marks, okay? So now, what is the actual yield? Our actual is what we had, which were produced. Uh, 0 0.397 over um, what we produced, which is theoretical yield, 0 0.50722. Okay, so put this in the calculator. If you put in the calculator, you're gonna get seven. But by hundred, right? Don't forget about by hundred. Seven, seven percent. So these are percentage yield of copper. Now, let's go to our equation. The actual equation. You see? So let's go to the actual equation now. So okay, okay, let's go to the last equation. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, another one, another one, just a second. There's a very interesting question here. Yeah, I hope you can see this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah this one here, excuse me. So we have some stuff here, right? Excuse me. So we wanna produce also copper chloride. So for this case here, oh man, I love this. So we produce copper chloride. Let me drag this question here. I think it's gonna be very, very important. Let me not drag it for a very interesting question here, yeah. Mm, okay, just a second. Yeah, let me take this. Let me take this. Let me copy this question. I'll come back there. These are glassware. You know glassware. Okay. Let's go back to our question. Okay, cool, fantastic. Now, look at this now. Look at this, look at this, look at this. I hope you can see. Now, let's finish up this in two minutes quick and then I'll finish. Let me just make this smaller a little bit. I hope you all can see. Now, look. So we have something here, right? So we have something here. Look, we had a question here. We had a copper chloride and the react. Yeah. Copper chloride was uh was dehydrated it has some water and it react to the sodium sulfate sulfite this sulfite because it has a three now we have a sodium sulfate after hydrochloric acid and copper chloride and then what we do if you can look careful this is uh this is uh hydrogen and sulfide together so the iodide the ionize and form of sulfur dioxide and water okay you can memorize these three equation quickly I want to go to I'm not here for balancing the chemical equation I want to go to find the percentage yield if you want the balance the chemical equation I've got separate equation so now we want to look so first and foremost we want to know what we want to find we want to find uh, copper chloride because this is what we collected for this case copper chloride G percentage yield so we're gonna say here now a uh, percentage yield equal to the actual yield Divide actual yield divided by the uh, theoretical yield, and then we multiply by hundred percent. Now we go. So do you have the actual yield? Now we go. Look careful. We don't have the actual yield for now. See, but we know what the reactor do. We have a five gram of sodium sulfate, and also we have a six gram of copper dehydrated. Can you see? We have a gram of sodium sulfate and also we have a drama photo of, of copper chloride which you react see so now for this type of experiment you need to make assumption not assumption they're going to give to you in uh, maybe you in the uh, chemical laboratory so you do your experiment and then you have already your copper chloride with you let's say you have with you see 
Now you want to take it and you go to wait on your scale or your balance and say, oh, so let's say, let's say for example, because they must give to you the actual yield that you have obtained. So let's say our actual yield, let's do a dump share, our actual yield. I'm just saying, let's assume we go to 0 0.25 gram. 0 0.25 gram, let's do a assumption. That you have dried, you have extracted from the experiment is 0 0.25. Okay, let me just do this. It's too far or too far, sorry. Is 0 0.25 gram. Gram of copper chloride, because for this case, what we're gonna collect is copper chloride. So we have an actual yield. So we wanna find the theoretical yield. So the question, we know here, we use, excuse me. You see here, we use what? Of aluminium, which we react. And if you can look careful here, we were using what? Excuse me, what we're reacting here? A reaction of aqueous copper sulfate. Okay. So if I can come here in our question now, for this case, I'm gonna say I got two things. You have a sodium sulfate and also have a copper chloride one, which is hydrate. I'll take this as the mass of reactant. See what I'm saying? And do the same step like I did before. Okay, so um, I'm gonna say oh, I need a space here. Okay, let me write here. Uh, gram, cause uh, I need to write all over here. Mm, okay, let me see. Um, okay, you gotta remember, I do believe mass of sodium sulfite is five gram, mass of copper dehydrated is six gram. I hope you're gonna remember. Oh, let me write here. Uh, five gram sodium sulfite. So we're not gonna have some apology. Sodium sulfide, five gram, and six gram, I'll well, write six gram of copper chloride, two H2. Oh, okay. So then I'm gonna come and let me write here because of the space, I don't have enough space. So we're gonna say now, we wanna get the gram of copper chloride, what we're gonna collect equal, always take what's gonna react remember is what is sodium sulfate see what i'm saying sodium sulfate so that you can get copper chloride means you must take what this sodium sulfate what mass which is five gram and then you multiply by one more of the sodium sulfate so you can see one more one more so you can see here five gram multiply by one more of sodium sulfide remember it has three so it's sulfide over the molar mass of sulfide so you know how to get molar mass i'm not going to go through the whole steps now because you know sodium two sulfate three sulfide sodium is 23 time because 23 is the molar mass of sodium you can go to your periodic table and check here okay sodium is this one here sodium but i don't want to waste a lot of time for me you know how to check the molar mass sodium is this so the molar mass of sodium okay let me write here so let me find here so you can see okay is we want to get to sodium sulfide okay sodium is 23 11 23 23 but there are two so multiply by two and they would plus sulfur is 32 sulfur is here it's 32 take the bigger number now because there's two numbers 16 and 32 take the 32 and they will plus oxygen the three oxygen is the look there's an eight and 16 so you take the bigger number because for every element there's a smaller and bigger number so we're going to say 16 by the three of them time time three so you can put in the calculator, you can work it out there, math, and then this is gonna give you the molar mass uh, of um, sodium sulfide equal to, uh, let me check here quickly, sodium sulfide uh, equal to, okay, okay, just a second, sodium sulfide, 126.04, 126.04, 126.04, 126.04 gram per mole, that's the molar mass of sodium sulfide. So let's come back here, we say okay, so I'm gonna say divide by the molar mass of sodium sulfate one one twenty six point zero uh point zero four three or you can say sometime you can google if you have internet you can google okay so we multiply then okay and then we multiply now let's see what I'm saying remember here how we did we say 
let me just show you something so I can remind you what we do okay and then uh, you take the mole of the product divided by the moles of reactant see you divide them so what is a product our products here how many moles is is it copper chloride how many of them there are two so we're gonna say two of copper chloride divided by the mole of reactant reactant it was what it was uh, this one here but it's more, more is the number before and you see this is the number before that's to say two here is what you just say one there's no miss one so divided by one of sodium sulfite this is what is means you say uh, molar mass of copper look it's copper chloride copper uh, is 63.5 you know how to get there and chloride is uh, 35.5 you can add it you want to get what uh, 99 no 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 98.99 98.99 over and then you over say one more of that word copper chloride see what i'm saying and then what you do there plug this in the calculator plug in the calculator i think it's going to give you 3.928 but let me verify my statement here so let me just make sure if it's true what i say 8.9 now 7.84 oh, oh seven okay five times two five times two times nine hundred point seven over one twenty seven okay seven point eight four six seven point eight four six but you can do your also your mathematics by as far as I saw here seven point eight four six five please let me know if I made some silly mistake here you see five five times uh times times two times 98.99 over 126 times one times one okay uh oh i made a mistake i see i see i see i see i see i see i made a mistake sorry so this is supposed to be 126.043 times yeah seven point eight yeah it's correct this is correct so this is what the theoretical yield is. so let's finalize so we're going to say now percentage yield equal to the actual yield what is the actual yield we got our actual yield we got it what is the actual yield our actual yield um is what you got when you're doing experiment there in a uh, in a in a laboratory you see what i'm saying so we say we did assumption we say our actual yield is 0 0.25 but you what you're gonna get after you done your experiment is that's what you're gonna write as the actual yield which is gonna be 0 0.2 which for your case you can pick your weight that you got but for me i just assume because i'm not in a in a, a chemical lab and i'll divide by the theoretical yield 7.845765 multiplied by 100 percent so then you can get one answer here. So you can see uh, okay for me I go three point one eight six percent. Remember I just made assumption. So what I got, I don't have something that I got in a uh, in a chemist lab. So the most important thing here, look, like I say. If you face time just come here share this video subscribe if you have not yet please come here subscribe go to my website I have a website I have mobile application that I created two of them okay go check you can access all these material on App Store on an iOS okay if you have an Android iPhone you can access all these materials okay these intellectual also go to my uh, go to uh this page here and try and call c is my other youtube channel please come uh come and do your donation it's very very important i have a different methodology that you can uh do donation also we have a business that we made in there's a digital platform where you can purchase some merchandise the inspirational merchandise if you got that you know what you got distinction 
<laughs> the thing she's obvious. So you get that, you know, it's gonna give you power. She's gonna give you energy, just like the energy that I got me to be in this position that I, I'm in. You might be in the right position, you know, for whatever you do success, but sometimes you need that spiritual drive, the power, the energetic, see, the light. You see what I'm saying? From the Yahoo, from the universe. See, from that's gonna give you that constantly driving you see on whatever you want to achieve so also come right here man that's me when i was fourth grade you can see how i started from nothing i'm still trying to put stuff together you see but at the same time it's very very important that you have to help other people like i always say because if they can become successful means it's easy for you network and become successful as well you know because it means nothing if you can become successful and everybody uh, the eating dust, you know, makes sense. So, man, if you face time here, come show me some love, share, subscribe this video to a lot of people. You know, don't keep it to yourself, don't be selfish, it's never been good. Thanks a lot for time, peace, and I'm gonna see you soon. We out.